Welcome to the RIS tool interface. When the user logs in, this is where the user manages the various projects. The user can create a new project and add project name and description, but for the demonstration today, we will edit an existing project. On the left-hand side is the main navigation panel, which includes project details that the user has entered. The region of interest is the study area being evaluated for flood risk. The tool includes digital elevation model defaults, and under the manage project files is where the user uploads their geospatial data. This is where the user can also override the existing digital elevation model default file um, for when final resolution data is available by simply uploading into the tool manually. And this is also where the user uploads other shape files such as building footprint, floodplains for the various return periods, land use, roads, streams, etc as well as model output data, such as your HECRAS or SWIN model catchments. The tool utilizes various step damage models, for example, the IBI depth damage curves. These are used to estimate damage to building structures and contents based on the flood depth exposure under each return period, and the damages can also be scaled spatially. The user must upload a land use data file and assign building types under each land use category, as in the IBI depth damage curves. The user can upload multiple building types under each land use category. The tool also has a built-in infrastructure damage cost model for roads, sewer main, utilities, etc. for calculating direct damages to these infrastructures due to flooding. Then the user runs the analysis and all the results can be viewed by clicking on view map. The user can easily toggle between various storm profiles. For the demonstration today, we will review the 100-year return period results and the different flood damage evaluated. The tool, however, evaluates damages under each return period and compares the cost and savings annually. For example, under the 100-year return period due to riverine flooding, critical infrastructure such as bridges that has been impacted can be reviewed spatially and the total damages estimated are also calculated. Other infrastructure exposed to, due to riverine flooding can also be reviewed, including buildings, that are shown on the screen in the various shades of red, as well as other infrastructure, including railway and road structures exposed to riverine flooding can also be assessed as highlighted on the map and the associated damages in dollars are also calculated that are used in the financial assessment and return on investment metrics calculated later on. The tool also performs damages to buried infrastructure as a result of erosion and the presence of those buried infrastructure crossing the stream, including utilities, sewer mains, and drinking water mains. The tool also evaluates buildings that are flooded due to groundwater separately due to the presence of alluvial aquifers, as shown in the green polygons, that connect to the floodplain and experience the same increase in water level as the river itself. The tool also evaluates urban flooding as a result of overland and sanitary sewer backup. As you can see on the screen, the tool highlights buildings, roadways, and railway structures that are exposed to overland flooding, and the associated damages are also calculated. Similarly, the tool also evaluates buildings at risk of sanitary sewer backup under various return periods. The tool also generates priority flood risk area maps by calculating the total damages incurred within each catchment area, the dark red shade indicating the highest dollar value incurred, as well as the breakdown of the damages. The tool also generates priority flood risk area maps due to health risks exposed in socially vulnerable areas for both riverine and urban flooding, as you can see on the map. Once the tool has identified high flood risk areas under baseline conditions, it then allows the user to now apply management options to reduce flood risk in these priority areas. Once the user makes a selection, for example, low impact development in this case, they can make additional selections, such as applying LID uniformly, choosing a custom uptake rate, and also selecting a volume control target. The tool also has default life cycle costs for each management option for return investment calculations. Once the user makes the selection, now they can manually draw the areas they want to control with LID in this case by prioritizing areas that have experienced the highest damages due to urban flooding and manually controlling that area. 
The user can also select other management options, for example, stormwater management ponds to reduce riverine and groundwater flood risks. Similarly, the user would provide an update rake and the lifecycle costs are in, in the tool. They can then manually draw areas they want to control by taking a similar approach by targeting high risk areas that are experiencing the highest dollar value impact or health impacts and targeting those areas manually, as you can see on the screen. The tool then generates a summary report, which includes graphs that show across various storm profiles what damage reductions can be achieved. These are hypothetical scenarios and numbers just to show you a sample. The tool also performs a financial assessment and a full life cycle costing of the various management options and calculates the return on investment associated with each management option as can be seen on the screen.